Alrighty guys, welcome back to 1822 MC Adventures and More. This is my channel, my name is Pete, and today I'm at Dixon Field. The day is wasting away. I've been sitting here totally enjoying my mellow in the woods. It's been nice and quiet. I've been drinking some coffee. and Check this out, guys. So what I got here, guys, is some new coffee. My friend Noah, who's a member of the posse, dropped this off and some other things that I'll be talking about later. But uh, if you've never heard of this, it's called Gold Roast. It's coffee creamer and sugar, and it's really some good stuff. So I'd like to say thank you, Noah. That coffee is awesome. It really is good. So, guys, I've been sitting here just watching the world go by. It's nice and quiet. No news, no bullshit, no nothing. Just peace and quiet. I'm planning on doing some fishing, but right now I'm going to get ready and make some breakfast. And hopefully the way the day is going to go is I'm going to make some breakfast. We'll do a little fishing. And then whenever I go camping, I always say I'm going to freaking tell you what I packed when I get home. And that never happens. So, well, I think what I'll do today is as I pack up, I will explain my gear. So let's go ahead and... Uh, Get ready to make some breakfast. Alrighty, guys. This is a normal chicken egg. And this is a crazy egg. I guess the storm and the heat kind of threw them off their lay. I'm willing to bet big money there's two yolks in there. Don't you know that hurt pushing that thing out. But let's go eat these things. Yeah, guys. That's quite the egg there, ain't it? And I tell you what, I know that poor chicken screamed bloody murder when she was laying it. Oh, that had to have hurt. So, what are we doing here? Let's put some oil in here. Be direct sunlight. Yeah. I'll be taking off probably later on today. <laughs> All right. Okay. All righty, guys. So I uh, just had a little conversation with my neighbor. I'll probably be talking about them soon enough. They're out here camping and they have a cat that identifies as a dog. So more on that later. Let's make some breakfast. I'm starving. Okay, so now I don't normally cook like this on this little stove because it's so hot, but uh, I'd rather be cooking on my Coleman, but I didn't want to bring the Coleman. I brought this, so let's see how this works. Oh, let that get hot. And I'm going to be eating with my new spork that I got from my friend Noah. And it seems like a pretty good thing. It appears to have a bottle opener right there. And I'm assuming that that is to grab a pot. And then I guess you can put a string through that and hang it around your neck or whatever. But uh, appreciate it, Noah. I will put this to good use. All right, let's see if we can make a patty out of this. Yeah. Okay, now the trick is to oh, turn that down a little bit. We'll let that cook for a while, then I will flip it, and then I'll put an egg on it, and we will have breakfast. I'm going to sit here and drink my gold roast coffee. Thanks again, Noah. It is really some good coffee. 
I don't care what kind of coffee you got, it always tastes better out of a canteen cup, right? Uh, yeah, I came out here yesterday afternoon, set up the hammock, set up the tent, and let me tell you why I set up a tent. This message goes out to all you people out there that are fucking scared of your own shadow and are scared to go solo camping in a public campground. I mean, what the fuck is wrong with you? You scared you might make a new friend? Scared you... I'm not going to go down that road today, guys. But for those, this is for those of you that are too fucking scared to go out in the woods. Quit making excuses and do it. You don't want to be alone? Take my advice. Set up your hammock. And bring a fucking tent with you and set up a tent. Now you got two people staying here, right? Safety in numbers. And unless you're ultralight backpacking, the fucking tent should, should be moot, a moot point because it's in the trunk of your car, right? You're not carrying it. <clears throat> but yeah, I hear a lot of people uh, talking about, oh, I'd like to go camping, but then they just start making all kinds of fucking excuses. Just do it. Just fucking do it. Make some mistakes and learn from your fucking mistakes. If you don't come out here and get killed, you'll be a better person because of it. And I better get something to grab that pot with or I'm going to burn my fingers. All right, it seems like the wind's blowing a little bit. Let's maybe put my little El Cheapo cooler bag that ain't worth a shit. But now that the weather's nice, those cooler bags do work. But, uh... Man, there was one time I was on my way to the Midwest, and of course, like a dumbass, I planned the trip in August, and it was a heat wave, and I had a bag similar to that, but maybe a little bit nicer, and I had been on the road for several hours. I was hot. I was dehydrated. All I, for a couple hours, all I was dreaming about was the yogurt cup that I had in my cooler bag, so finally, after a couple of hours of riding in desert type heat i pull over and like man i'm gonna have me some water and i'm gonna eat that yogurt well it was a black cooler bag and the sun melted everything in there that yogurt had went sour i opened it up and it had curdled it stunk i didn't know yogurt went bad i thought it was bad to start with right but uh learned a good lesson there don't pack yogurt during a heat wave unless you got like a really good cooler All right, let's try this here. Hopefully that will balance. Kind of hard to balance a big pan on a little burner that big, right? Yeah, I had a very peaceful night last night. But you know, Let's go back to campground safety. You know, if you're scared to camp alone, like I said, bring an extra tent. And then the, then the people will think that there's two people there. And then that way, if some crackhead comes into your campsite, you'll lose your hammock and your tent or both your tents, right? Anyways, it's amazing how fucked up people can be these days, ain't it? Mm. Yeah, the key to cooking this stuff is patience. It's the hardest part I have about cooking corned beef hash because I like it crispy. You got to let it sit there in the pan forever, right? But I know I, I usually uh, eat spam, but not today. We're eating corned beef hash. And then after I eat, I'll probably make another cup of coffee and then we'll go fishing. But I, I brought my fiberglass collapsible cane pole. It's actually working as a, as a stick for my hammock. And I uh, brought a couple of poles I don't normally use. And, of course, I brought my little favorite pole. We're going to be fishing for some brim. I might try some bass fishing or some cat fishing. We'll see. Ooh. I don't mean to be dyslexic, but a little... Uh, I'm not sure what kind of bird it is. Pretty little Tweety bird. Looks like he's got black wings with some white on it or orange. I don't know. I'm not. I've 
forgot most everything I know about birds. He's a pretty little thing. Anyways. Yeah, last night, I woke up about 5 o'clock or so to do what old guys do in the middle of the night. And uh, I checked my phone, and it said that it was uh, like 54 degrees. I was impressed. It wasn't supposed to get that cold last night. But I slept like a baby in the hammock. And we'll talk about that, too, because I did something a little different. And I'm happy with what I did, and I believe it will work until it gets really cold out. But yeah, talking to my neighbor there, we were out here yesterday. I was talking to Noah, and my son-in-law and youngest grandson came out here. And this girl comes over talking, warning us about her cat, letting us know that she had a cat out here. And she had a cat out here running loose that goes camping with them. The craziest thing. It's like a dog follows them around and whatnot. But, uh, thought it was pretty neat. Don't see that every day. I'm sure it's all over YouTube, but uh, I personally do not see people camping with cats. And if I do, normally they're in a in like a little playpen sitting out in front of an RV, right? But for someone to actually be tent camping and to add to it, these folks... They rode over here from Swansboro on their bikes, toting little bike trailers. thought that was pretty impressive. Oh boy. Well, you know, the crusties on the bottom of the pan's the best part, right? Yeah, so for those of you that do not have chickens, I don't think you have any idea of the agony that that poor hen went through passing that egg. I mean, look at the size of that. It's like a turkey egg, and this is a chicken egg. And I got two more eggs here. But these are normal sized eggs. And this egg is like as big as both of them. So it's always great when you have your own chickens and they lay a double yoker. Oh, and I was talking to my neighbor and they told me they were out of coffee. So I gave them some a uh, couple packets of black rifle coffee. And she walked me this over and said they don't use it. And she said, because unless you're like in direct sunlight, it doesn't work. So I was like, well, yeah, I'll give that thing a shot. So this is supposed to be able to charge up a phone, but the panel has to be in direct sunlight. The, if you follow the channel, you know my friend Eddie made me a solar panel charger. And it would work even in like the shade here. He, uh, let's see if I can describe this right. He like took one like from Harbor Freight and he took it apart because he's a electronic whiz. He retuned it and now the thing is like a supercharger. And I didn't bring it out here today because it was just a simple overnighter. I didn't think I'd need it and I don't. I can charge off my motorcycle battery and it's a brand new battery so I'm not that worried about charging something off of it for 20 minutes and I could call him up and ask him to send me a freaking tow truck if my battery was dead and the guy could come out here and basically jump me off right never used him I mean I've been a member for like 14 or 15 years now and I bought it because I wanted AAA type service in case I break down on the road somewhere and the AMA is a motorcycle association, and I'm like, well, I'd rather give my money to a, a motorcycle association versus um, a car club, right? And, uh, I've never used any of the, no, actually, I take it back. I have used the benefits once or twice. They do have some hotel discounts for like Hotel 6 if you're willing to stay in a crack shack and uh red roof in and there's a few other places you'll get like a 10 or 15 percent discount 
back in the olden days that was nice but uh i don't think i would pay what they want for a hotel room these days i don't even know what they go for i'm scared to ask in today's world but you're talking about a connoisseur of the $34 a night hotel back in the day when I was wrestling. My friends used to ask me, how'd you get your hotel so damn cheap? Because they'd be paying $60, $70, $80 for the fuck you night. And uh, I would book it in advance two or three weeks. And I'd be paying like $30-some dollars. But, you know, you had to have a credit card to do that. And for some of those guys, that was kind of reaching a little bit i guess but uh if you're living on the fly it's kind of hard to book a hotel room a month in advance but when the promoter's telling you what he's got going on for shows and he's booking you for shows you know several weeks in advance where the show is going to be at so you get on there and i don't even remember there's those fucking middlemen come and go with uh, the hotels. It's like whether it's travel velocity or whatever. I don't remember what I used. I'd search them all. <clears throat> but yeah, if you're traveling and you're staying in hotels and you got a schedule, book that stuff in advance. You'll save a lot of money if you didn't already know that. And of course... If you're traveling during the week, hotel prices are always cheaper Sunday through Thursday. And then they go up for their Friday and Saturday rates. But yeah, I honestly, I don't see me staying in a hotel anymore. I'd much rather just find a safe place in the woods and go to sleep if I need it. Or... Pay $10 for a federal campground or 20 bucks for a state campground, whatever, and take a shower, right? But yeah, for me, staying at a hotel and then having the chance of my bike being stolen out of the parking lot and having to listen to some honeymooners next door and some other people on the other side fighting because they've been miserable for the last 15, 20 years. I don't, know, I don't mean to be so negative, man. I should be happy that I'm out here in the woods. Well, I think it's about, just about time. I'm going to flip this one more time, and then I think I'm going to put the eggs on there. Yeah, this stuff's starting to get a little crunchy, just the way I likes it. But yeah, back when I was wrestling, I really don't miss them days of uh, staying in flea bag hotels. When I was wrestling, I had my gimmick bag, which had my wrestling boots and my tights and whatnot in it. And then I had another bag that I sold t-shirts and pictures of me and whatnot. And then I had my cleaning bag. Because that was usually the, 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 the gotcha on those cheap hotels is like, yeah, it's 30 some dollars a night, but the fucking bugs are free. So I had, I would get the hotel, I'd go in there, of course, I'd turn the sheets back and make sure there was no fucking bed bugs, and then I'd usually spray the mattress with fucking Raid, and then I'd clean the bathtub out, because I know most people travel and they take showers, but, you know, after getting the snot knocked out of you, it's always nice to be able to sit in a bathtub with a nice I don't even like to admit it, but back then I'd buy a Bud Ice, come back to the hotel room, and I'd drink a 24-quart in the bathtub, and I'd go to bed. Great life, huh? <laughs> Not that much glamour to it, I can assure you. You only got the glamour when you're in front of the crowd. The rest of the time, it kind of sucks. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking about, there was a time there where the, one of the companies I worked for, we were wrestling three, four nights a week and traveling all around North Carolina and Virginia. We didn't go to South Carolina. But the looks you would get, I mean, I'd go in there. I mean, back then, I weighed about 270 pounds, and I had a 35-inch waist. I was jacked and stacked. But uh, someone like me goes into a laundromat, 
and I'm washing a little mini load and I'm pulling out tights and knee pads and all kinds of weird shit. Got some funny looks back in the day, that's for sure. But yeah, I don't I miss the fans and I miss the cheering of the crowd, but I sure as fuck don't miss the promoters, the bookers. And all the backstabbers I used to work with. I don't mean to be bitter. I had some good friends when I was wrestling. But most everybody's a backstabber in that business. Right. I'm going to tell you a dirty secret. You think rock and roll. Any of you guys out there play music. You think rock and roll is a dirty business. Step into the squared circle. You ain't seen dirt like that ever in your life. Because you got to remember. Everyone that's working. Everyone's a world champion. All you got to do is fucking ask them. Right. Everyone's looking for that spot, and there's only room for one. Yeah. Very competitive. All right, we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. All right, I'm going to call that good enough. Let's bust open this double yoker here. I don't know if you can see, but there's two eggs in there, guys. And I'm going to put one more in there just for good measure. Mm. And these are 100% free-range organic eggs. Fresh out of the butts of my chickens. If you're new to the channel, you go back in the day. I do have some chicken videos. Don't make them that much anymore. Just I don't know why. I just don't. But um, I got chickens that eat out of my hand. They're pets. And they got names. And I got two philosophies for that. Well, a happy chicken is a tender chicken. And a happy chicken definitely lays eggs. But yeah, if you're in a spot where you can keep three or four chickens, I'd say do it. And in case you guys didn't know, because I know some of you out there just don't know these kind of things. You do not need a rooster to keep chickens. All the rooster does is crow, eat food, screw his hens, and fight. But uh, he will protect his hens if he's a good rooster. But they'll lay perfect eggs without a rooster. They just won't have a cum bubble in them, that's all. Yeah, that's a cooking slowly. Oh, man, I tell you what. If it wasn't for the 14-day limit and my responsibilities, I could live down here. Just would need a safe space for uh, when a storm comes in, right? Because this is not a safe place when a storm comes in. Oh, my gosh. Every time there's a big storm out here, Trees fall over, whether they fall across the road or just fall in the forest, they definitely fall. And as you can see, one of these big chestnut trees was to fall over on you or your tent, you become a statistic. Absolutely. Oh, man. Get that rooster come cooked off of there and we're in business. All right, guys, and while we're sitting here and I'm randomly talking about stupid shit, I want to give a shout out to my hurricane lamp there. I've been doing a little R&D at the house with that. And what I have got in that lamp is citronella oil, like what you'd put in a tiki torch. And so I light that up, turn it up just a little bit so it, it doesn't really smoke, but it kind of soots a little bit. It definitely does a good job of keeping the mosquitoes away. And when I get in my hammock, I have it under the tarp. I turn it down real low, and uh, the fumes start coming up, and uh, it damn sure keeps the bugs away. So uh, I forgot what I paid for that lamp. They're cheap. You can go to Walmart. Don't buy a nice one. Buy a cheap one in case it fucking breaks, right? They're like, I don't know, $10, $12, whatever, 15 maybe. I wouldn't pay any more than that. And I just bought at the dollar store a bottle of oil. It was $6 for a big bottle of citronella oil. 
that will last me a long, long time. Because I turned that thing on yesterday afternoon, and it was just about empty this morning, so I turned it off and filled it back up, and I'm bug-free right now. Between my mosquito spray and uh, that right there, I'm comfortable out here, guys. Because if you've ever been camping at Dixon Field, you know that uh, the mosquitoes are bad out here at times. I guess the uh, storm blew away the yellow flies. There's no yellow flies out here, which is awesome. That's God sent. I appreciate that, Lord, because the yellow flies can just really ruin your day. Come out here to go fishing and forget your bug spray. You'll only do that once. But, uh, boy, this stuff just won't cook fast enough, will it, guys? I'll probably just do some magic editing and this stuff will be done in like two minutes, right? <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. That is looking good. Yeah, I should turn the camera around and give you guys another peek. The... Uh, at the river the sun's now hitting the water and the bushes on the other side beautiful actually i'm not going to tease you like that let me turn the camera around while this stuff's cooking and hopefully i won't knock it over all right there we go guys what do you think about that? Is that not beautiful? When you see stuff like that, see, that's why I bitch so much about trash out here. Why would you want to come out here and wreck this? I mean, really, this place is just freaking unbelievable, ain't it? And since the uh, they chased off the homeless bum that had been living out here, it's peaceful and quiet again, so... Let's see if that stuff's just about ready. I have a feeling it's going to be about done. I'll sit and let it rest, and I will heat up some more coffee. Yeah, it's done, guys. All right, so let me put the lid back on there. Don't be a dumbass and grab a cast iron skillet without a pot holder or a glove. You'll regret it, guys. Trust me. All right, so now let's see if I can't maybe pour some of this grease off, right? Okay, we'll let that sit there. All right, so now we'll heat up some water for more of that absolutely awesome gold roast coffee. He gave me a whole bag of it. I'm probably going to drink it all before I leave because it's so damn good. I'll turn that up a little bit. We'll let that bubble just a little bit, and then we will mix it up, and we will eat breakfast, guys. So probably just take a moment of silence right now while that's heating up. Of course, like every other retard in the world, I got to check my phone, right? And that will be going in my garbage bag. Remember, always pack your trash out when you leave. Don't be a dickhead. Shame the camera wasn't turned. A pair of doves just flew through here. All right, so let's do this here. I got three of these left. My canteen cup is full, so I'll be putting two of these in there. And then I'll take one home and probably let my wife try it. Because I'm such a nice guy, right?
Yeah, guys, one more time. Thank you, Noah. Appreciate it. Gold Roast 3-in-1 Coffee Mix. Good stuff. It really is. All right, I'm starving, and there's bubbles on the bottom. That means this is about hot enough. We'll just crank it up real quick. And give it the turbo blast, right? All right, it's boiling now. You know, a couple of years ago, I kind of talked to smack about these uh, little blowtorch stoves. But uh, I ended up getting one, and you know what? I like it. You just, it's hard to cook on it. What did I do with my fucking knife? There it is. All right. They're kind of hard to cook on. It's not a good even heat like you get off a of propane Coleman, but uh, if you're just heating up water, it's pretty good. And if, you, if you're patient, you can learn to cook with it. All right, so let's open this up. One pack. I always put the safety on those things. They will open up in your pocket. All righty, let's do this. Give it a shot here, guys. <clears throat> okay. Corned beef hash, a double yolk egg, and a regular egg. Life is good, guys. Give thanks for a minute. Dear Lord, bless this food. Allow it to give me strength and nourishment and carry me through the day. It's in your name I ask this, Jesus. Amen. All right, so do I use the fork or do I use the spoon? Well, we'll start out with the spoon. Oh, that's good. I think it could use a little hot sauce, though. Let's see, I should have some in here. Yippers. Compl some Texas Peak compliments of Bojangles. Not a big fan of fast food, guys, but I tell you what, it's hard to turn down Bojangles chicken, ain't it? That and their dirty rice and their pinto beans. Good stuff. All right, so let's stir this up a little bit. That's what it needed. All right, let's use the fork. Big old egg yolk, yum, yum, yum. Yeah, this is awesome, guys. Out in the woods, fresh eggs, corned beef hash, and some good coffee. Nice little breeze. Life is good. Turn the camera off. I'll see you guys here shortly. Don't want to be a pig and eat in front of you, right? 